In this module, we will be talking about communication. Now, this is the second part of the video. The first part, in the first part, we have talked about the process, the elements and type of communication. In this part, we will be talking about barriers to effective communication and how do we overcome these barriers. So, first of all, let's see what are the different barriers to effective communication. Now, there are various barriers, but the 10 most important barriers are as follows. Semantic problems, status effects, physical distraction, information overload, time pressures, cultural differences, trust level, selective perception, self-concept and absence of two-way communication. Now let's see these 10 barriers in little detail and understand how do they affect our communication. The first one is semantic problems. Now what exactly is a semantic problem? The use of inappropriate language or inappropriate symbols or words which affect our understanding capacity is basically the semantic problem. Now there are many words in our day-to-day -day communication that will have different meanings for different people. The semantic problems are of two types. The first type of semantic problem is that some words or phrases, they are so general or so abstract that they can have different interpretation for different people. For example, in this particular photograph, you can see that there is a symbol made on the floor and different people are interpreting it differently. Some can see it as an eight, some can see it as an infinity, some can see it as a wave, while one can see it as a pretzel and one can even see it as a DNA. So a simple symbol can have different meaning to different people and this can cause a semantic problem and ultimately it can be a, a barrier to communication. Now another type of semantic problem is it arises when different groups develop their own technical language. For example, there are specialists such as scientists or engineers or doctors. They use different technical words while explaining something to the unspecialized people in the concerned area. And those unspecialized people, when they are not able to understand those technical jargons, that can cause a semantic problem and that can cause a barrier to effective communication. So these kind of problems exist. Now, the second type of barrier in effective communication is the status effect. When we talk about the status, we see that people who occupy higher positions in the organization, they usually have a tendency to talk a lot, speak a lot to their subordinates, but not really listen to them. So when people, they do not listen and they do not understand each other, then we can see that effective communication is blocked. So we should stop interrupting and we should start listening even if we are superiors. The third type of barrier to communication is the physical distraction. Now what is a physical distraction? It can occur because of different situational factors. For example, we can have a, a, a constantly, when we are on our telephone, there are constant telephonic interruptions or when we are in a meeting, then our telephone continuously keeps ringing or there are messages continuously coming on our phone. That can cause a physical distraction and that can also affect our effective communication. Or we can have people walking in and out of the room. We have loud noises in the background as you can see in this particular picture. And then apart from these physical noises, even how the speaker speaks, the way uh, he talks, his manners, his, uh, his body language, that can also affect the or distract the listener and it can affect, uh, affect the effective listening. So the physical distraction is also a, an important barrier to communication. The fourth barrier to communication is information overload. When there is too much information to actually uh, understand, to actually monitor in our head, then also it can lead to uh, an effect, ineffective communication. So when there is too much information which is transmitted at one time, or even when there is complex information that is presented within a short frame of time, in both the situations, communication can get ineffective. So the problem, it also gets compounded when the person who is listening, he has a very limited attention span. He's not able to really uh, be attentive for a very long time. 
or even when he has a very poor memory retention memory is very poor he cannot really retain things for a very long time then that kind of uh, problem can really uh, increase the communication barrier so we all know that managers usually are you know drowned in communication and that is one reason uh, it can lead to ineffective communication so managers uh, how are they uh, overloaded with information they are uh, in, uh, you know overloaded by emails memos official letters reports instructions circulars telephone meetings they all have to attend all these things and that can lead to ineffective communication so we have to make sure that that we uh, do not have too much of information overload so as to uh, prevent barrier to communication then another reason uh, uh, for ineffective communication is the time pressure when we have very limited time to complete the given task then we might uh, you know uh, you know not really listen and it can lead to ineffective communication so pressures of meeting deadlines they can also reduce our communication and usually managers when they have these deadlines uh, they usually resort to those shortcut uh, you know shortcut kind of uh, communication and also they have to deal with a large number of people at a you know limited period of time in a limited period of time so they, that can lead to incomplete information they can just verbally give uh, messages that also will lead to ineffective uh, communication and also uh, if there is uh, you know verbally transmitted short telegraphic messages then even the listener will have confusion and ambiguity what exactly is being said what action should be taken so that clarity is not there when the time pressure exists so we have to make sure that there is no such time pressures in order to have effective communication then another very important barrier to uh, to our effective communication is cultural differences now when we talk about different cultures uh, we have different meanings in different cultures and that can lead to ineffective communication for example uh, the words that we use the colors or symbols they have different meanings in different cultures and even for example if we take the example of a country like india we have indian culture but even in indian culture we have different different subcultures every state has a different language different dialect and it is difficult to understand different languages if you are not from that region so even subcultures within a national boundary can have different cultural differences and can lead to ineffective communication now culture what is it it provides people the way of thinking seeing hearing and interpreting the world so similar words they can mean different things to different people from different cultures and even when they are talking in the same language for example in the second picture you can see a simple gesture like uh, holding our hands together uh, that can have different meaning in different cultures for example in egypt it can mean uh, you have to be patient wait for some time in italy it can mean uh, what do you mean they are asking what do you mean by this and in greece it could mean that was just perfect this is the way of saying it's just perfect so one simple hand gesture could have different meanings in different culture and could lead to a confusion in the type of communication what we are having between the people of different cultures so make sure this uh, the cultural differences do not arise and how do we overcome these barriers we'll see the next uh, barrier to effective communication is trust level if we do not have trust then our communication will never be effective so stephen covey has very nicely said that when the trust account is high communication is easy instant and effective and when there is lack of sufficient trust between communicating parties then definitely selective listening will take place and it will lead to ineffective communication so trust level is very very important in having an effective communication next is selective perception now our brain is uh, devised in such a way so as to perceive uh selectively at the same time so when there are different activities happening at the same time uh, but your brain is able to process certain things that is basically selective perception so in this particular picture you can see there is a man who is reading a book along with that there is uh, a small baby that is playing with a dog there is a tv uh, that is playing loudly but he is able to selectively perceive the information and even with the no different noises different types of barriers he is able to effectively read his book 
okay so there is selective perception that is taking place so people they usually have a tendency to listen to only one part of the message and usually block out other information for a variety of reason that can lead to a barrier in communication but selective perception is a process by which people they filter out all the irrelevant and less significant information so that they can deal with the important matters and that is required in effective communication so much of this process is psychological it's unconscious because that is how brain processes information so selective information is very important in order to uh, not have uh, an ineffective communication next is uh, next barrier would be the self concept self concept uh, stands for for example there's an employee who is uh, who really needs a promotion in an organization who really needs that advancement in the organization and his his personality is very optimistic he thinks positively in his life he's very happy so even so that kind of person can even uh, in front of a customer he can read a smile even a customer smile or what kind of uh, let's say communication the customer is trying to have the casual comment or even from the supervisor he is able to understand what the supervisor is trying to say uh, because he is being groomed for promotion but at the same time if a person he has a low need for so advancement and he is very pessimistic so even uh, use with a uh, the good conversation with a good communication he'll not be able to really understand or read anything from that uh, from the supervisor's comment so your self concept is also important in having an effective communication and the last one is the absence of two way communication that can lead to ineffective communication for example you can see here in the one way communication we have different types we have verbal one way communication for example a radio is playing uh, on a radio uh, when you're listening to radio jockey that is one way verbal communication we have non verbal communication we have written one way communication so reading a book could be one way written communication then uh, we have two way communication when two people are talking or when uh, Non-verbal verbal communication when the when two people are hugging that is a non-verbal two-way communication or written when you let's say you are having an interaction or written interaction through email or through postcards that is a two-way communication in a written form. So when there is an absence of a two-way communication that will also be lead to an ineffective communication. So one-way communication from let's say top to bottom from the superior to subordinate without any feedback that can also hinder communication from taking place in a good manner. so the receiver he might decode the message in a way that was not intended so neither receiver nor the sender will be able to realize that the message was misinterpreted because it was only one way communication for example in an examination hall when we have we, we have the examination question paper that is basically a one way communication which can be easily misinterpreted by some students because the students they may seek to clarify certain things in the examination hall but they usually discouraged and they are being told that whatever is mentioned in the paper you have to answer even if you don't understand so that kind of two way communication when it is not there to lead to ineffective communication so now how do we overcome these barriers to communication now we can do that by active listening we can do that by cultural sensitivity we can do that by having parallel channels and repetition we can do that by having information communication and information centers or by being empathetic and understanding and even by using feedback mechanisms so let's see these different uh, ways of overcoming the barriers so the first way is by being an active listener when we talk about being an active listener it means different things first of all you have to be an active listener you have to wait for the speaker to stop before you start speaking when let's say the speaker is speaking and you also speak at the same time ultimately the communication will be uh, you know distorted and you will not be a good listener and you will not be able to have a good communication so wait for the speaker to stop before you start speaking also keep your hands and feet still when the other person is talking because that is really distractive in a communication then try and make a good eye contact because that also helps in having a good communication repeat what you have heard so that the speaker knows that you have got the message right also face the speaker when they are talking so that they can read your expressions and understand that you are able to understand the communication 
then focus on what is being said ignore different distractions that are happening around you ask different questions nod your head when the other speaker is speaking and also tell the speaker if you do not understand or whether you understand what is being said so that is be being an active listener and that will help in overcoming the barriers to communication the next one is being sensitive towards different cultures what is being sensitive towards different cultures so that when we uh, there are two types of barriers that can arise one is the cultural barrier that is when people uh, they have different cultural backgrounds and they try to communicate one language and the other could be a language barrier that is uh, they have a difficulty in understanding the dialect and language being spoken by different groups of people so it's important to Uh, address the cultural barrier as well as the language barrier in terms to have in terms of having a effective communication so to avoid this problem we should research on different cultural differences and when you are going to let's say a different country or different region try and research about it and make your content polite use a reliable translation for better understandability also do not put up biased statements about culture rather ask the other person about their opinion and share their knowledge so that you are you're having good knowledge of different cultures and that way you can reduce your uh, or you can overcome your communication barriers the third way of overcoming would be having parallel channels and repetition now when we talk about parallel channels we are basically reinforcing a verbal communication with a non verbal communication for example let's say if i uh, put up my thumbs up like this when i say okay so putting up thumbs up is a non verbal way of saying that it's fine it's good okay so and along with that if i say okay so i am basically creating a parallel channel along with so i'm creating a non verbal communication along with the verbal communication i'm repeating my uh, way of talking in a way to get a better understanding and this is basically how we overcome a barrier of communication or for example if you want to say call me you can along with saying call me you can along with that you can say, you can make this kind of gesture where you put your hand on your uh, on your uh, you know ears and say that you can call me this way you are you are creating a parallel channel you are repeating your uh, sentences uh, through a non verbal way and you are making your communication more effective the third way uh, third example could be for example you want to say good so we might just say good the other person might not just hear it so a better way would be to say good and along with that if you say this kind of symbol then this will create a parallel channel this will create a repetition and this way even if he has not heard good with your action he will be able to understand that you are saying good so that will really lead to an effective communication the fourth uh, way of overcoming uh, barriers to communication would be to have information communication and create information centers now in the first part of communication we saw what a grape point exactly is it is a an informal way of communication that exists in all the organization and it is it is a, a universal fact that it it all exists in an organization so managers uh, they should make use of uh, both the formal and the informal channels of communication in order to have good uh, understanding of the communication so you can reinforce information through formal uh, you know what is received formally through an off the record talk with your key subordinates or even you can clarify reinforce and clarify a formal letter with an informal chat or session among the employees so that's how you can create information communication you can create information centers and reinforce your communication and avoid overcome your barriers to communication next would be being empathetic in understanding empathetic means able to understand the other person's feeling what the other person is trying to say so that way the feeling and awareness of the other person and their point of view will make you a good communicator will help the reduce and reduce the communication barrier so a good communicator is able to recognize the emotions in others and able to respond appropriately and that way you can have an effective communication now in this picture we can see there are three types of empathy one is an affective empathy that is you are able to respond to other person's emotions appropriately then we have a somatic empathy which is able to 
feel what other person is feeling and the third one is the cognitive empathy which is the ability to understand someone someone's response to a situation so make sure you are able to incorporate all these three types of empathy in yourself in order to have effective communication with others and the last one is to use feedback mechanisms feedback is very important in order to have good communication and when we give feedback make sure your feedback is very specific and not very general or not very vague when you give feedback try to give the feedback immediately and not let's say after a long time after the conversation has taken place if you give your feedback immediately the conversation would be more effective also when you give feedback uh, give the feedback to the receiver on uh, what uh, you know he can rectify what are the things that he can rectify on rather than you know where, where the individual has no control over try and be more descriptive rather than being evaluative when you're giving your feedbacks also when we give feedback try to uh, give uh, feedback on the issues that require urgent uh you know urgent attention rather than giving uh, feedback on various areas or various problems also when you are giving feedback see what is your own motivation in giving that feedback also make sure that the receiver is ready to uh, you know receive your feedback and in the end try to be non threatening and also disregard your superior status when you're offering your feedback that will help in giving a proper feedback and creating a good effective communication so i hope you like this uh, second part of the communication video thanks for watching please like share and subscribe thank you